My name is Gary Friedman, and welcome to the Friedman Archives blog. I'm here today to shed some light on some of the technical focusing differences between DSLRs, including Sony's A-mount cameras, and the new E-mount mirrorless cameras. Specifically, my goal is to intuitively demonstrate why DSLRs and Sony's SLT A-mount have a theoretical advantage when it comes to tracking moving objects like sports or birds in flight. And to help demonstrate that, I'm going to be explaining things from the ground up, like I always do. So it'll take a few minutes, but it'll be worthwhile. I'd like to introduce you to this camera. This is the Minolta XK. This is a classic SLR camera. The f-stop could open and close, the shutter can do all sorts of things, but the important thing to know here is that the shutter, the f-stop, only closes during the instant of exposure. At all other times, it's wide open. Why is that? The answer is, in order to focus manually, it was very important that the viewfinder be as bright as possible. And so, when the f-stop is open and lets in more light, you get a bright optical viewfinder and it's very, very easy to focus. Why am I showing you this old camera? Well, the answer is I want you to be able to see what I see when I look through it. And because it's an older camera, you can take things apart. I can take the pentaprism off and allows you to look right into the focusing screen. So as you know, there's a mirror inside here. When you take the lens off, the light from the lens comes in, hits the mirror, which is at 45 degrees, and then goes straight up, getting you onto the focusing screen. You could actually use the camera just like this without the pentaprism. The reason you don't is because if you use it outside, this very faint image gets washed out by daylight. Plus, everything is turned left and right and upside down, and the pentaprism will correct for all of those things. But for today's purposes, what we're going to do is show you the viewfinder without the pentaprism. Let me introduce you to some other characters as well. This here is the Pentax K1000. I'm using this so nobody accuses me of being a Sony or a Minolta fanboy. I got them all. There's another one here. This is a real classic. This is the Polaroid SX70 camera. You know, there is a phrase in the world of science talking about standing on the shoulders of giants whenever you're talking about, um, whenever people have a scientific breakthrough, they didn't do it all themselves. They were standing on the shoulders of many, many other people much smarter than them that helped them get to almost that point. Polaroid was never in that category. They were the giants. They had to invent by themselves the idea of taking instant pictures. So you take it, you peel it apart, and it develops right there. Then they invented pictures which develop right in front of your eyes, nothing to peel apart, you, and it can work when sunlight is hitting directly. In addition to that, they invented folding optics for an SLR, they invented a flat battery, they even had their own custom integrated circuit just for this camera. They didn't, they were the giants. Anyway, I'm going to be using this as the second item to focus on. So, to help you see what's going on, I've also created a nice little doodad. The idea is we're going to be pointing the camera in this direction, like that. And to help keep the lights out, I've created the mother of all, I've created the mother of all lens hoods. So this is what it looks like when you're looking through the viewfinder. And because the f-stop is wide open, only one thing is going to be in focus at a time, either the K1000 or the Polaroid. And it's very, very easy to see which is which. Now, what if the camera were designed differently? And what if the f-stop were closed down all the time? I can show you what that looks like by invoking the camera's depth of field preview button. It's a camera that fancy SLRs had, and essentially it put the f-stop down prematurely so you'll be able to see what would be in focus before the picture was actually taken. Let me invoke that now. Here we go. I'm at f22 by the way. Oh look at that. Well this is one disadvantage of optical viewfinders. When you stop down the lens not only does it let in less light but also things in front of what you focused on and behind what you focused on suddenly come into focus. But as you can see here in this picture you can't really see what it is because it's too dark. If you can get by that 
when the, there's enough light outside, it can actually work better. But I can show you what it really looks like because I can cheat with this camera. I can just amplify the light a little bit. Let me just switch this to a different mode. And now you'll be able to see what the camera sees. So I'm, very, very quickly now, let me, let me go back to a wide open where only one thing is in focus, the Pentax. Now I'm gonna stop it down to F16. And compensating for the lack of brightness, you can see the rear SX-70 here is more in focus than before. The depth of field preview is doing its job. Hooray. Okay, now what if I try to fine tune that focusing? So with the lens stopped down right now, I'm gonna try to fine tune the focusing. And no matter how I turn it, it's not obvious which of the two cameras are actually in focus or not. This can be a problem. This is why people prefer to focus with the f-stop wide open. Okay, so the takeaway from this is it's easier to accurately and quickly focus when your f-stop is wide open. Cool. In fact, this mechanism, let me put this all the way here. When it came time to make cameras digital, they worked exactly the same way. Here's the uh, Sony Alpha 77 II. Here we go. I'm gonna take a picture now. The evolution of cameras could have stopped right about now. However, some people felt it was imperative to add movies to cameras, and that just made things miserable because these were optimized for still. The focusing system was optimized and evolved so that they can focus accurately and quickly when the lens was wide open. When you are adding video to a camera, you got a lot of problems. First problem is you got a focusing motor inside the body, which can be picked up by the camera's microphones. Second of all, you've got an f-stop mechanism, which is not designed to be smooth. It's kind of jerky and kind of loud. Let me uh, invoke the camera's depth of field preview here. See how small it is? Now listen carefully and watch as I try to change f-stops. This mechanism was not designed for video. And this is the reason why when you're taking the SLT architecture and trying to shoot movies, the camera will only allow autofocusing if you are not trying to specify an f-stop. So it'll only allow autofocus in program mode. If you're in aperture program mode or anything else, your manual focus all the way. The reason for that, because the camera cannot focus accurately or quickly when the f-stop is anything but wide open. Starting to see where this is going now, right? So when Sony decided to design the E-mount from the ground up to be with video, they made some interesting choices. The first thing was, where's my E-mount? I got a Sony A7 right here. The first decision they made was, the f-stop mechanism is going to be electronic. It's not going to be mechanically actuated. And it'll be seamless, stepless. You'll be able to go from f5.6 to f22 quietly, smoothly. If you need something in between, it won't be jerky at all. Second, the focusing motor is in the lens, not in the body. And it'll be SSM, much, much more quiet. Uh, they made some other changes as well. The image stabilization would be inside the lens and not inside the body. And that way you can shoot very long video sequences without the image stabilization mechanism overheating, which is a problem back in the days of the Alpha 55. So, let me show you here how the A7 and all other cameras in that category, the A7 II, the A7R, the A7S, and the Alpha 6000 plus, you know, whatever Sony's going to introduce next week. Let me show you how it handles autofocusing. Now, have a look here at the f-stop way inside and back here. And I'm setting this to f25. It is very, very close. It'll stay open. I'm going to press the shutter release button down now. It'll focus for a second, and when it finds focus, it'll shut down. The reason it does this is so you'll be able to see, without having to invoke a depth of field preview function, what will be in focus before you actually shoot. But you have to press the button down first. Let me do that once again. You press it down, it'll find focus, and then it'll close down so you can see what's going to be in focus before you shoot. Now that's if you're in... AFS mode or single shot. That's where it tries to focus once and then it stops. What if 
you have the camera set to AFC, where you, which is the mode you'll be using if you're going to be tracking anything at all that moves. Let's do it here. So let's start out with the camera in AFS mode. Again, this is like a single shot. I press it once and there it goes. Easy, simple. Now, let's switch to AFC mode. Function. Let's go to AFC. Now, remember, look at the f-stop at the bottom. I set this to f25. What the E-mounts are all going to do is once you start to press the shutter release button halfway in, in AFC mode, it'll first open up the f-stop all the way if it isn't already there. Find your first focus. If it doesn't recognize a face, it's going to recognize, it's going to focus on whatever's closest. Then it's going to stop down. And then, while it's in the stop down state, it's going to start tracking whatever it has decided was the subject. This is going to be fun, because remember what we saw earlier with the Minolta XK. If it's really small f-stop, it's very difficult for your eye, or contrast detect autofocus, or phase detect autofocus, to be able to accurately and swiftly figure out where is your subject and is it in focus. To it, I press the button halfway, and it founds it. It found it initially right there, because you see the green dot in the lower left-hand corner. But look at how it's hunting. It's having a real hard time figuring out, is it moving, is it not? Now contrast this to, let me make it a little bit easier for the camera. I'm going to open up the f-stop to, uh, let's make it f, let's make it f13. I'm going to press the shutter release button halfway again. There it is. And you can see it's hunting in a very different way, and then it became very self-assured. There it is. It just got easier the wider it was. If I go open all the way to f3.5 or 5.6 with this lens, press it halfway, it finds it, and okay, it's hunting. And if it moves, the camera will get it. So this should give you a really good idea of how much more difficult it is for any camera that's mirrorless to be able to find focus while the f-stop is very, very small. Under what conditions is the camera going to have a difficulty? Well, when you're outside shooting in AFC mode, when you're outside, it's going to be a lot of light. The f-stop's probably going to be very small. If you're shooting something like birds in flight, this architecture is going to have more difficulty following things than if the f-stop were wide open or if you were using a conventional DSLR. And that's the name of that tune. Thank you very much for joining me. If you thought this was useful, please seek out some of my eBooks on the all oh, the mirrorless cameras on the Alva. I write a lot about Sony books. Go to freedmanarchives.com slash ebooks for the entire catalog. Bye. Thank you.